we're going to look at my Monday morning routine. Well, this is what I call it. Each Monday, I tend to give my machine a little bit of a, a clean up and overhaul. Hello, welcome to Graceful Embroidery and to my Epic 2. Everything in this area is, is where the majority of the maintenance each week should be done. I'm going to change the needle, I usually do that. One of the things that we have to be aware of is the usage on our machine and this can be measured in several ways. We can look at the designs we're stitching out and the number of stitches. We can look at the, the, the how often, or we can look at the timing on our machines. But one of the clearest indications is the number of bobbins that we're getting through. Now we have these lovely bobbins in the Epic 2, which last a lot longer. And, and so you've got to work out a system for yourself, um, guide, uh, a system that will guard, guide you as to how often to um, do this little bit of maintenance. The amount of lint which will collect around the bobbin area will depend on the thread and the fabric and the stabilizers you're using. If you're doing quilting and you've got batting underneath there, that will give off a lot of fluff. I am going to have my machine turned on so that we've got a good light here. It's probably safer to do this with the machine off. I'm doing it with it on because I'm confident I know what I'm doing. So the first thing I do is remove the cover and put it to the side here and take out my bobbin. A little bit about bobbins. I have invested in a nice big box of white bobbin bobbins, all pre-wound and you can get these from Coles, which is in the UK, in Nottingham. They do these wonderful um, packs of uh, bobbins, all wound up ready with your embroidery bobbin fill. And they're marvellous. They're nice and tight and they tightly wound so they last a long time. Now, to get our... Um, stitch plate up. My little screwdriver there will release it. Now you can see we have a little bit of a tangle here. Um, this is what's left from my last stitch out and it's a terrible mess as you can see. One of the important things to realise about the Husqvarna Epics is that they have a tendency to collect threads in and around the bobbin area. So you must be aware that when you start getting breakages or thread, threads breaking, it, it's usually down to the fact that you need to clean down here. I'm going to lift out this cover and I'm going to lift out the bobbin holder. Now this is almost jammed in. I'm going to show you something here that if you're not confident to do then don't do it and certainly don't do it with your um, with your machine turned on. But if you put your nail down here and grab this bit here you can slide this bar across and then you're able to get into this area here which has got your thread cutter and this is where the threads always get stuck and you need to give it a good brush. Now if you brush too vigorously you'll lift the whole thing out but do, it doesn't matter if you do that because it will actually help you understand how it all slots together. Um, I usually get my forceps and have a little delve around as well. Make sure there's nothing caught under there because that's 
where threads collect, especially if I'm using metallic threads. And the next thing to do before you do anything else is to push that bar back across. Okay, and that is very important. Now I'm going to brush this area around, get rid of the fluff and have a little bit of a, a delve inside. And sometimes I turn the needle so that it moves round and I can give it a little bit of a poke through that gap here. Great. Look at, oh, there's a nice big, uh, big piece and return the needle to the upright position where it was when we started. Now, this area here where the feed dogs are, I don't find brushing it sorts out the problem. So I have a pack of pipe cleaners and I bend one in half and I put it between the uh, areas here. And this tends to collect a lot more gunge than the brush would get and I can really get down inside here. Now you'll find that the end of this will get a bit oily but that doesn't matter. Um, I throw it away each, each Monday after I've done this but they're nice and soft they can't do any damage but they do pick up bits and pieces and do leave it a lot cleaner than just a brush would. And remember never use a can of, of air to blast this area you'll just blow things further down into the uh, needle area. When you're happy with your cleaning and everything looks fine then it's time to start putting things back and uh, giving them a little brush if need be. And also feeling along the edges and making sure there are no sharp corners if you have problems putting this in, regard these two here as ears of a bat and then you'll never have a problem popping it in. I don't need those forceps, I'll take those away. And then we're ready to put this plate in. And then we can get the stitch plate as well. So now I know it's all nice and clean but uh, I need, I'm going to change my needle. This is the lovely magnetic. Uh, now as you see I don't use my, um, I have a little pot here, I think it's an old vitamin pot and I've made a hole in the top and I pop all my old uh, needles in there and uh, it'll be years before that's full up. But at least they're out of the way. These are the needles that I use in this machine for embroidery. Schmetz top stitch needles. And I'm putting a 9041 in here. I'm going to show you the safest way to put a needle in. Now this is this lovely tool that does so much for us and and if you look very carefully the eye here has got a flat area so it means that the, the back of the shank which is flat because of the shape of the hole your, your needle will always be in the right position to put it into place. I confess I don't use this very often as you can see, I'm happier to use it use it by hand because the lovely thing about um, about the Epic 2 is that it's just got so much room here underneath the uh, between the top and the and the base. So you've got to push up really high, make sure it's right to the top, and then just tighten it. So we have a new needle. We've cleaned out the bobbin area. And we can put our bobbin back in now. Thread it round, catch there. Oops. It looks like I don't know what I'm doing, but it's because I'm actually 
working around the tripod here with my phone in front and then that just pulls away so that is all ready and we can thread up the machine make sure you give your machine a little bit of a of a, a wipe over remove all the dust and um, and here we are it's all ready for the first stitch out of today hope you found that helpful um, Another thing to do perhaps is just to get a um, the cloth that you clean your computer screen with and clean down the uh, the front of your your touch screen because it's probably got um, marks on it as well. I also tend to zoom in here. I tend to check this area along here. This area here can get quite dusty and sometimes along the rim here of the embroidery unit you get a black dust that forms and if you're working with silk and delicate pastel colours you don't want that to get on your on your machine on your fabric so I have a couple of little cloths for this purpose of just sort of cleaning things off and making sure everything is fine keeping it clean let me show you there you are you can see there's a bit of dirt there on the uh, on the cloth and just while we're talking about the embroidery unit I don't I don't take my embroidery unit in um, every time I have the machine serviced but every perhaps every two or three times or if I've had a problem I do take the embroidery unit on in and I do that because I had an issue with my machine I took it all the way to my dealers in Nottingham which is a four hour journey and when I got back the problem was still happening because they didn't do the test out with my embroidery unit so I like to take my embroidery unit take the whole package and have that serviced at least you know every other year if not more frequently depending on how often you sew hope that's been helpful and we'll come back and do something a little bit more exciting next time on the Epic, on the Husqvarna Designer Epic 2. The best machine there ever is.